How's it going guys and welcome back to my channel and as another week passes that means we have another Hell Divers 2 weekly update. With it being April Fools no one knew what or who to believe, Joel had enough and we had a big patch which balanced a few things and implemented a few changes. The story is now starting to ramp up as well and the game just keeps getting better and is showing no signs of slowing down anytime soon, especially with the new war bond coming. But before we start, if you enjoy these kind of videos, hit that like button and if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. So first up, we had the major order. With people still hanging at the creek and us losing Dropnir, I think Joel had enough of all the memes and decided it's April Fools, so he wanted to mess with us a little. Because some people thought it was an April Fools joke that we had to go back to the creek and help liberate it. But no, we did. We had to go back and help the Creekers liberate the creek in honor of all the fallen heroes who have lost their lives trying to defend the planet. And we did manage to liberate the creek, which made everyone happy. But after that, we had to defend it along with Dropnir and Ubernaya which some weren't too happy about stating they're getting tired of fighting in the same planets along with the back and forth between the Sokol Creekers and the other divers which has been ongoing the past week so things got a little bit strained. We also held on to Vandalan and liberated that planet and now we're tasked with wiping out the Automaton Legion completely. I do feel this part of the story is coming to a conclusion now though and Arrowhead are planning their next moves. Then after that we had the weekly patch so on Tuesday a new patch dropped and it was a big one to be honest guys, which brought more balancing changes to missions, stratagems, enemies and hell divers plus stability and fixes. We start off with the new level cap increase which goes up to a whopping 150 and these are the new titles. Level 60 is Fleet Admiral, 70 is Admirable Admiral, level 80 Commander, 90 Galactic Commander, 100 Hell Commander, 110 General, then we've got 125 star general, 130 10 star general, 140 private and 150 the super private. So for you that like to level up and get to max level there is plenty for you to get through now. There's probably some people there already by the time of this video but yeah that's the level cap increased it we knew what was coming. Then they've added two more hazard conditions which are blizzards and sandstorms. Blizzards are going to be interesting. Hopefully there's some new planets coming as well. So blizzards maybe line up with them, some snow planets. We just don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. And then we have some balancing changes. So first up is the one to missions. And this is retrieve essential personnel. Move the enemy spawn points further away from the objective to give players a fairer chance of defending the location. I love that because sometimes when you do spawn in, enemies are straight on top of you as well and it can get pretty hectic straight away, not giving you a lot of time to get yourself set, get stratagems in, etc. Then we have there are fewer civilians required to complete the mission on higher difficulties. Then underneath that we've got destroy command bunkers. Now has more objective locations, the mission was too easy before compared to other missions, it can now appear in operations from difficulty 5, half the negative effect of operation modifiers that increase stratagem cooldowns or call in times. Then we've got primary, secondary and support weapon changes. Arc thrower, fixed charging inconsistencies, it will now always take one second to charge a shot. Then we've got reduced distance from 50 meters to 35 meters, I know some aren't too happy about that. Then we've got increased stagger force. Guard dog, now restores full ammo from supply boxes. Anti-material rifle, damage increased by 30%, that's a nice little change there. Breaker incendiary, damage per bullet increased from 15 per bullet to 20 per bullet. Then fire damage per tick increased by 50% from all sources. Then we got the Liberator Penetrator now has full auto mode. And then we've got Dominator. Increased damage from 200 to 300 and increased stagger. Then we got Diligence Counter Sniper. That's had an increase in armor penetration from light to medium. The Slugger. Reduced stagger. Reduced damage from 280 to 250. Reduced demolition force. A few people aren't going to be happy about that. There's a lot of reductions on that one and also fixed armor penetration tag in the menu. Slugger, Liberator, Concussive, Senator. Fixed incorrect armor penetration tags in the menu. Recoilless rifle, increase the number of rockets you restore from supply boxes from two to three. And the spear, increase the number of missiles you restore from the supply boxes from one to two. And the heavy machine gun, the highest fire rate mode reduced from 1200 RPM to a more moderate 950. Recoilless rifle and spear getting some nice ammo reserve changes there. Then the stratagem change is to the exosuit and this is rockets will now penetrate armor only on direct hit. Then changes to the enemies. These adjustments are charges normal melee attack now does less damage against exosuits. Bile spewer and nursing spewer do less damage with their puke. The bile titan can no longer be stunned 
Shriekers no longer create bug breaches. Shriekers hitting you while they are dead now does significantly less damage. Nice balancing changes there to some enemies. Then moving on to us, the Helldiver. You've got heavy and medium armor protects better and you now take 10% less damage than before while wearing heavy and about 5% less when wearing medium armor. Fortified commando and light armor is unchanged. And then we're gonna go over some fixes really quickly. We've got fixed issue where save settings for PS5 would be reset when the game is rebooted, causing things such as loadout and hint settings to reset. Enemies now properly target exosuits. Previously, many enemies effectively ignored exosuits if a hell diver on foot was available for them to target. Fixed exosuits being able to fire their weapons while opening the minimap. The hell diver and the exosuit both had a bug that made them sometimes take explosion damage multiple times, making things like automaton rockets be too deadly. This is now fixed. Automaton enemy constellations that preferred to spawn more of certain devastator types did not work and are now functioning as they should. This means that sometimes when playing against the automatons, you will face more devastators instead of the other enemy types. We've got some good changes there guys and as always balancing does need to happen in games like this. Certain stratagems or weapons get used too much or are too powerful so the devs need to realign them or make other pieces of gear that aren't as powerful. They need to make them obviously more powerful and bring them up because at the end of the day you do want to avoid things like power creep and stuff like that because the game will just get too easy and then people will moan. So it's up to Arrowhead to keep the game functioning the way it is in terms of it being a bit more of a challenge. So hopefully people do start understanding this and i think we're seeing less of an outrage now as people who are new to the live service model are now getting used to it and have kind of accepted that these things do need to happen and then we're going to move on to some new images that have appeared and it seems we've got some new enemies on the way there have been sightings of ships which were cloaked leading to speculation of them being illuminate ships these images on screen now are pretty clear that something sinister is ramping up behind the scenes it would make sense though, as the automatons did send out some signal across the galaxy for help, so maybe the Illuminate have now arrived. I personally can't wait for them to return so we can dish out some more democracy. But what I will say is, be careful of the propaganda that is kind of pouring water on these images, saying no, it isn't true. Well, that says to me it is, so I'm just saying guys, be careful, keep your eyes peeled up to the sky. But it's very clear that something sinister is going on behind the scenes. And then we've got the Creek Cloak. So on the 3rd of April, Helldivers 2 official X account tweeted this. Presidential Decree. The President of Super Earth has officially recognised this day as Malevolon Creek Memorial Day. This week, in remembrance, all Helldivers will be issued with a special commemorative cape so that they may carry the memory of their fallen companions into battle. And you can picture it now. The Creekers standing there, smiling from ear to ear, knowing that the planet that they love and fought for so much has now got a cloak called the Fallen Hero's Vengeance. But in all seriousness, this is a nice little touch from the developers. The Creek has held a special place in us divers' hearts, and it is good that we've now got a cloak to remember the fallen heroes and Creekers across the galaxy. And I actually think it's a nice looking cloak as well, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And a day later, we got our first look at the new war bond that's coming, and it is called the Democratic Detonation. What a name. So it's safe to say this war bond is there for us so we can obtain stuff to blow shit up. I just want to clear something up real quick though guys that this game is absolutely not pay to win and the other bonds do not time out you can keep working on the older bonds for as long as you like i just wanted to say that because there's still a bit of misinformation going around anyway some of this gear looks amazing we've got updated primary weapons with the grenade pistol and the adjudicator eruptor exploding crossbow and a thermite grenade all looking really good and we've even got an extraction booster to go with it to make extracting that bit less time consuming. The armor is looking tasty as well with the groundbreaker medium armor, demolition specialist light armor, and my favorite, the devastator heavy armor. We've seen images of this one before, and I have to say, I'm definitely gonna use it because I die a lot, and hopefully this will start changing that. And as always, we've got our brand new capes to go with our new armor as well. This is Harbinger of True Equality, Eagle's Fury, and Freedom's Tapestry. And you can mix and match them as you please. They're all going to be available in the war bond i'm looking forward to this one dropping it's jam-packed with goodness and i love that there isn't any fomo attached to these as well let me know what you think of the upcoming war bond down in the comments below guys i think it's looking like it's going to be the best one yet that's just one man's opinion though but it's clear to see with the past week in Helldivers divers 2 that the game is just getting better and things are warming up nicely the community is still strong and loving the game and arrowhead are handling things brilliantly the future is extremely bright guys but that is the end of the video if you stuck around until the end thank you very much 
And if you haven't already, hit that like button. It helps me and the video out massively. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. But as always, guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next video, divers.